In this lesson, we'll learn how we can use bone deformers to rig different body parts of a character. So let's go ahead and get started. So continuing on with our alien theme, we're going to be working on a new character here, this big-brained alien that I've designed. And I just want to show you really quick how we have this character broken down, much like we did with our tentacle monster, just over here in the layers section of our timeline view. So we have the head on its own layer, and as you can also tell now, we also have the mouth and the eye on their own respective layers. So you could have multiple mouth expressions or multiple eyes um, very easily on their respective layers. And then this is pretty much the same as with our tentacle uh, monster. The arm, both arms are basically one solid drawing. Okay, so I don't have each arm broken up into two pieces. I don't have any kind of joint designed where we could um, essentially um, decide to bend the arm. It's just all one drawing. And again, this is where the power of the deformation um, tools really come in um, and really shine and allow us to very effectively um, bend um, different parts of a character like arms and legs. Same thing with the legs. We'll go ahead and hit spacebar here and kind of pan around our camera view. So each leg is essentially all uh, one drawing. Okay, so I don't have the legs broken up into any kind of pieces. And then I also have the feet. The feet are also on their own layers. Um, and then the same thing for the hands as well. Okay, so I'd like to move them independently of the the legs and the arms. I don't want to worry about really affecting them with any kind of deformers if I'm um, rigging the arms or the legs. Okay, and this, this is kind of very familiar as to what we did with our tentacle space monster. All right. So let's go ahead and zoom in by hitting 2 on our keyboard here. Again, I'm using the Toon Boom keyboard uh, shortcuts. And I want to go ahead and focus on this right arm right here and apply um, some bones to it so we can bend it. So it's this arm right here in our layers section, arm 1. Again, I like to use numbers to dictate whether it's left or right. So 1 is right and 2 is left um, for my example here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and come up to our deformation toolbar. And let's go ahead and engage our rigging tool, and we want to turn on setup mode. So just to recap, the rigging tool is going to allow us to basically apply these, these uh, deformers, and then the setup mode essentially preserves the state in which we rig this arm. So you want to enable that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and navigate over here to our tool properties just really quick. And again, we have these different modes. Um, this one here is the automatic mode, uh, which would allow you to essentially apply either curves or bones depending on whether you just click or click and drag. So I just want to make sure I'm just applying bones. So I'll just go ahead and click on that button right there. Okay, so the first thing we want to apply is the offset point. This is pretty much the same as with our tentacle monster. So I'm just going to click there and that's basically kind of think of that as a pivot or a peg in which you can rotate this entire arm around. It kind of locks in that area right there. Okay, so um, now we want to go ahead and come down a ways here and decide where do we want the elbow. Okay, so we're treating this arm again with bones. Uh, we don't really want to move this arm around like an elastic rubber band, or we don't want it to move around like our tentacle on our tentacle monster. We want him to have a definite elbow. So probably right about here would be appropriate. So we're going to drop in that point right there, what will eventually become our articulation point to bend that arm. Um, forearm along the elbow there, basically rotating it. And then we'll click down here at the wrist area, and you can see now how we have what you would call an articulation point. Okay? So now what we can do is, looking at this, we can decide if we want to make any kind of adjustments as far as the placement of the, the bones themselves. We can kind of move everything around. You could come up here and, you know, rotate it if you wanted to tweak the overall placement of it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with... Um, how our bones are looking. So with that said, let's go ahead and exit setup mode. And you may see a slight shift in the arm. This is very similar, if not exactly the same, as um, what we saw with our tentacle um, on our tentacle monster, where you may remember the tentacle kind of got distorted. Same thing happens here. We just want to go ahead and hit this button right here to copy the state in which we rigged it to the animatable state. So again, we know that we're in, um, able to animate with this rig now because it's green. If we were in setup mode, it's red. So just to kind of recap that. Before you hit this button, though, make sure you have that deformation layer, which was created once we dropped in that offset point. It becomes apparent to that arm. 
So once we have that selected, we'll go ahead and hit this button right there and then you can kind of see how it um, basically matches up with our setup mode. All right, sweet. So let's go ahead and using our transform tool, we can kind of start to see how we can bend this arm around that articulation point. And then we can also rotate the entire arm as well. So really cool stuff. So we can bend it up. Now you'll start to see how you're getting some weird jaggedness, um, basically some kind of tessellation right there. And that's because we need to adjust the articulation point. And that's actually something we're going to tackle in our next lesson. So don't worry about that right now. And eventually we'll also talk about how we can um, adjust the fold in the arm as well. Okay, so we'll kind of tackle that as well in another lesson. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just kind of revert that back. So what I want to go ahead and do is do that the same thing to uh, the legs as well. I'll kind of demonstrate this on one leg. Um, and in between lessons, you can basically try the same approach that we've used here on the opposite arm and the opposite leg. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our leg. It should be leg one since we just worked on arm one. So right there. Okay, and let's go ahead and come up here and click on our rigging tool and our setup mode okay and we'll go ahead and I want to drop in that offset point probably right about here I think is appropriate so you can see that whole drawing um, by itself and just the way it kind of becomes highlighted and then we want to go ahead and come down a ways and so we have a very obvious spot right here where we want to drop in the joint for the knee and just the way I drew the legs and designed them I kind of wanted them to have those knobby knees so we'll just kind of drop it right there and then we'll come right here and drop that final one. So you can see how it gives us that articulation point right there on the knee. Okay, so that's looking actually pretty good. I don't feel like I need to move around or adjust anything. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and exit setup mode. Again, I'm going to just go ahead and select that deformation layer for the leg and then hit this button right there just to make sure that it's exactly like it is when we set it up in setup mode and we don't have any kind of deviations with the form of the leg. So we grab our transformation tool and we can see how we're able to move the bottom part of the lower leg right there. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and hide that hand. It's kind of in the way. I just want you to be able to see um, how we're able to move that leg. So I actually want to hide hand one. So just searching for, for that's right there. Okay, it's kind of hiding from me. Okay, so clicking on that deformation leg again, so you can see how we're moving that leg, and it actually looks pretty good. We are getting a little bit of, a um, little bit of distortion right in there, but it actually doesn't look bad at all. But again, we'll, what we're going to talk about in the next lesson how we can adjust the articulation point. And again, we can come up here. You can either rotate on the bone itself or on the articulation point and just move that whole leg. So you can see how amazing this is. This is so awesome, I think, because it saves you a lot of time in having to, you know, spend a lot of time designing this leg in two separate pieces, having to worry about how you design the each um, bottom part of the, each part of the uh, lower and upper leg and how they connect together. Um, usually when you're doing that and you're breaking them up into separate pieces, you have to put a lot of thought into, okay, how is this going to rotate around? Will I have any kind of information that pops out? Um, to make making it obvious that they're two separate pieces using the deformers really does um, remove a lot of that um, worrisome um, time that you have to spend doing that okay so um, let's actually go ahead and kind of focus on the head here so um, if you recall with our space alien tentacle monster or whatever you want to call him um, we basically used a uh, deformation curve for his entire head in his case his head was his body but I kind of like the idea of having a little bit of movement just in his head, perhaps when he's walking. Now, for the head, you actually could use um, a deformation curve, or you could try deformation bones. Um, we could again, you really want to kind of experiment. It's kind of a trial and error thing with some some different drawings. Let's actually see what we could do with deformation bones for the head, um, and kind of removing ourselves from the singular mindset of just ha being able to use it just with l arms and legs. You know, you want to try it out on different things. So I'm going to go ahead and find the head there, okay? And we'll go ahead and click on our rigging tool and our setup mode. And let's kind of figure out where we want to have that offset point, probably down here at the, bo the, at the base of the neck, okay? And then maybe 
kind of right here, kind of in the midpoint, and then maybe one right there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and exit setup mode. I'm going to go ahead and select that layer right there for the head, hit that button again, and let's just kind of see what we can do with it using our transform tool. So that actually doesn't look too bad. I think in this case it might actually work um, pretty well, especially once we get um, these um, facial attributes attached to the head. We could probably get a little bit of movement with the head there. And actually, if we wanted to, we could try this again with the head. Again, it's a trial and error thing. We could try um, rigging it again, maybe with a couple of articulation points. So something like that. So again, you don't have to just use a deformation curve. You can also see what the bones can do for you sometimes as well. Go ahead and exit setup mode there. Hit that button. And we can kind of see what it gives us there. It actually doesn't look bad at all. So we can see how we're able to get a little bit of movement. And again, those facial attributes would follow along um, once we um, rig them together in the, or uh, basically set up a hierarchy arrangement in our network view, okay? So really cool stuff. Uh, okay, so in between lessons, I'm going to go ahead and go and rig the, the op opposing arm and the opposing leg as well. And I encourage you to do the same, basically taking the same approach that we've already done and just kind of seeing how um, they can be moved. In our next lesson, we're going to go ahead and shift gears and focus on adjusting those articulation points. Again, you may have noticed how we were getting a little bit of uh, jaggedness as we bent that arm. So we'll kind of talk about how we can do that in our next lesson. So stick around, and we'll see you then.